around the world, Jehovah's Witnesses gather together each week for the Watchtower study. Join me, Chaka Yumba, and my panel as we uncover the many logical fallacies, failed biblical scholarship, and unscriptural doctrines in this week's study edition. This is the Alternative Watchtower Study. Hello, wonderful people of the internet. Welcome back to the Anthony Morris Returns channel. I'm very pleased, as always, to welcome back Ruby uh, to go through this week's edition of the Watchtower Study. Hi, Ruby. Welcome back. Hey. Yeah. So, so this week we've we 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 we're full team this week, right from the word go. So, which is which is a good thing. Um, any thoughts before we actually go into the article, Ruby? I mean, I read it and I was just laughing to myself in disbelief that they are changing. They're changing everything that I grew up with. So. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm learning this brand new, like this is unrecognizable than from when we grew up. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely the case. So let's just bring the article up and um, Ruby and I are going to start going through this. Um, so they, a lot of people, you know, not a lot of people, but uh, some people, one person accused me of uh, click, being clickbaity with my titles. So I know I've titled <laughs> this article, um, the governing body equate themselves to God. I said the governing body shamelessly equate themselves to God. And I'm just going to explain that mm -hmm. from the point of view of mm -hmm. the, the, just from the title of the article. And, and you, you will see viewers as we go on that that's actually no exaggeration. So you notice the title of the article. So this is study article number five for April the 8th to April the 14th, 2024. And this is when Jehovah's Witnesses will be studying at their weekend meetings. So this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Um, I, I think also just for people who are not familiar with Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, they, they do this very bizarre thing where when you go to the meeting, they get people to actually read out what's printed in the article paragraph by paragraph and then they get the Jehovah's mm -hmm. Witnesses to regurgitate what's in the actual mm -hmm. article. So it's it's yeah, it's the, it's the weirdest thing ever. But when you're inside, you don't notice how weird it is. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, coming back to the title. So notice the title is "I Will Never Abandon You," and then they have the key scripture, which is Hebrews thirteen verse five, and it says God has said, so in context, God says these words, I will never leave you and I will never abandon you. So the impression you get uh, from the title is that this article is going to be talking about how God will never abandon his people. That's the impression I would get as an outsider anyway, if I looked at that title and I looked at the theme the scripture. But that's not what the article is talking about. And, and they actually give it away right at the beginning with the focus because it says, to reassure God's servants on earth that they will not be abandoned when all the remaining anointed Christians have been taken to heaven. And as, as I've made the point, a point I've made on this channel is that when the governing body talk about the anointed, they're talking about the governing body because the governing body have actually printed in the watchtower that they do not rec recognize any other anointed people, any other people who claim to be anointed or partake of the emblems, they do not recognize those, but they recognize each other as genuine anointed Christians as a governing body. So basically, they, they're saying that the anointed, or in other words, the governing body will never abandon Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, if that's not equating themselves to God, then I, I really, really don't know what uh, equating oneself to God can you is. See? Yes, I can barely hear you ruby uh and so audience by the way i uh, just wanted to check before we get into this article in earnest can you can someone send us a thumbs up or um give us a shout out just to indicate that you can hear me and ruby because i can't hear ruby at the moment and i don't know whether she can hear me
So I think I've got some comments from Miss Maria Rodriguez has given us a shout out to say that she can still hear me. So that's very good. And we've got quite a few people on the live stream. So thanks very much for joining. Um, so just one more thing before we start looking at the actual material in this article is Ruby and I were talking about this off stage is even the song that they've selected um, is directed towards worshiping the governing body. So they, they have actually, uh, those, or those of us who've been in the organization, who had been in the organization for a while, they, they, they redid the songbook. I think it was in uh, 2009 that they created a new songbook. And then from around 2014, they started adding new songs in addition to the ones that were in the new songbook that they'd created in 2009. And quite a number of these songs are purely dedicated towards worshiping the governing body. And an example is this one, song number 27, <clears throat> which Jehovah's Witnesses will be singing as part of the study of this uh, article on, on Saturday and Sunday. It's called The Revealing of, of God's Sons. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this, this song is all about worshiping the governing body. So um, just going through some of the lyrics. Uh, let me just go over here. So I hope you can see those on the side panel. It says the time is near when God reveals his faithful chosen ones. In heaven, they will rule with Christ as mighty spirit sons. So clearly talking about the anointed or the governing body. Then it says the sons of God will be revealed along with Christ their Lord. They will join him in his victory and share in his reward. Uh, and the second stanza says, and soon the last remaining ones will hear his final call. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords will then collect them all. And the bridge there says, and then with Christ, these sons of God will wage the final war. The joyous marriage to the lamb will last forevermore. So you've got this song that does not even mention Jehovah at all. Okay, it mentions Christ, um, but it's not mentioning Jehovah at all. Um, and it's clearly directed towards worshiping the governing body. And then you've got this article again, where um, they, yeah, there's this governing body worship again. So yeah, uh, I guess that probably tells you all you need to know uh, about where this organization is heading. Um, any any other comments on this? I know that's a, like a long winded introduction, Ruby, but any other comments before we get into it? No, not really. I'm re I'm waiting to get to the juicy parts because I let's, was kind of shocked with what I read today. <laughs> let's let's get to the juicy parts then. Um, so we're gonna go into. Uh, so I've. I've I've, uh, I've selected some paragraphs that I've highlighted that I'm going to comment on, but Ruby, you can tell me the other paragraphs that you want to comment on. So I think you were you had quite a few comments on paragraph one, so I'll let you take that one to begin with, and then I'll add in my comments because I've talked and talked and talked so far. Oh, man. Yeah, the first paragraph was really crazy. I mean, the first word right there, years ago, Jehovah's people wondered when will the last of the anointed Christians be taken to heaven? What do they mean years ago? I've always wondered it. I was born and raised in this and I'm like, well, what's going to happen to them? What's going to happen to us? How are we going to know what to do when everybody's dead and we have to rebuild <laughs> and go to paradise? And um, that was the understanding that there was going to be a few anointed people left that are, were going to direct us. So that's why it really bothered me right there. It says we once thought that possibly some of the anointed might remain in the earthly paradise. That's what we thought, not might. Like it was it was real. Like that was the belief for me. That's how I grew up. You know, so that it, when, when we used to have anxiety, I'm like, oh, my God, what's going to happen to us? They're going to die and they're going to leave us alone. They used to reassure us all the time that there was going to be at least a few anointed people that were going to walk us through paradise like Moses walked the Israelites to the promised land and that they and then and then they would go to heaven. So after we were secured, they will go to heaven. Now, I don't even know. I don't even know because they they say it right there that in 2013. <laughs> <laughs> that completely changed. 
So now, because of a watchtower, now we have a completely new understanding of what I literally grew up with for 17 years of my life. All of a sudden, in 2013, that changed. And I'm upset. I don't like that. And I'm upset. <laughs> yeah. And also, yeah, viewers, just so, so you understand. So um, uh, Ruby is Christian. So, and that's why it's good to have her on the show because she comes at it with from a Christian perspective, someone who's still very strongly yes. believes in the Bible, still believes in Christ and right. so I on. Still... Uh, yeah, I'm agnostic atheist, so she balances me out. <laughs> um, so I think it's a, it's a good combination. Um, yeah, and, and, the, and the thing is, that they always use this language of we once thought. It's not like Jehovah's Witnesses are thinking for themselves and they're making these interpretations based on what they read in the Bible. They are being told by the governing body. So instead of them just saying, we used to tell you that it was like this, they make it so that, um, they make it so that it's, it's Jehovah's Witnesses' fault. So they're saying, uh, we once thought. No, it's not we once thought, it's we told you, and now we changed our minds. That should be the more accurate way of, of phrasing that. Um, right. Yeah. Um, so let's look at what they say in paragraph two. Um, so, um, okay, I'll, I'll take paragraph two and then Ruby, you can mm -hmm. add in your comments. Um, mm -hmm. So they're saying over there, they, they said, uh, however, a question may arise, what will happen to Christ's other ship, sheep who will be serving Jehovah faithfully on earth during the great tribulation? So uh, we're not going to go into the scriptures there, but um, this whole idea of the other sheep um, being another group of Christians, that is not what the Bible is talking about there. Uh, actually, um, I think w w when Jesus says that I have other sheep who are not of this fold, and these I should also bring in, he's just talking about people who are not who are not yet Christians. And potentially he could have been talking about Gentiles. He wasn't talking about two different classes of Christians as the governing body tries to make people think. But anyway, that's um, not as, controversial as what they're going to say. They, so they say some today may worry that they will feel lost or abandoned when their beloved anointed brothers and sisters are taken to heaven. Um, so I, I don't know, who are these people? Who are these people who worry that they will feel lost or abandoned? It's not like Jehovah has died just because the anointed, an anointed person has died, just because, um, I don't know, Ted uh, Jarrah's Jairus died, John Barr died. It's not that Jehovah, Jehovah is still there. So why are people wondering where to, uh, that whether they will feel lost or abandoned when the anointed die? So basically when they, they claim, the anointed claim that when they die, they go straight to heaven. So this is what they're alluding to. So they're, they're alluding to a time when uh, Stephen Lett, um, Garrett Lush, Samuel Hurd, David Splain, and Mark Sanderson and so on. They're alluding to a time when these people will no longer be alive. And they were saying, oh, people will be confused and saying, what are we going to do? But Jehovah is still going to be there. Jesus is still going to be there. The article says, I will never abandon you. So why is it that they're saying people feel lost or abandoned? <laughs> it's just, I'm confused. And who are these people who are worrying about this? Um, I don't know. Any, any, any thoughts on that, Ruby? I just feel like they're always trying to downplay it. Like some, mm -hmm. some of us, like, no, that mm -hmm. was literally being a Jehovah's Witness. If you weren't anointed, you were scared and you mm -hmm. were wondering what's going to happen to you because you don't have an, a heavenly position or a heavenly mm -hmm. hope. You have to wonder and be anxious about what's going to happen when 99.9% .9 of the world is dead and you have to go to paradise and rebuild whatever is there and watch the birds eat the dead bodies. Like, come on. I we, We've had such... <laughs> it it was scary. It's scary. And what do you mean some may worry about being abandoned? Of course. That's the whole point of having the anointed with us on earth right now. We view them like you speak to Jehovah. So whatever comes out of your mouth, it came from Jehovah. So they so, need to stop downplaying their position and downplaying us. Like what you talking about? So were you one of those people that was worried about what would happen when Stephen Lett, yeah. Garrett Lush? Yes, that you see, why? this is why I why? tell you. <laughs> 
th- this is why I tell you it's so upsetting for me because but, as a born in, that's why I always I always ask people how how devout or how fanatical you were because with me and my mom it was serious. We used to have the emergency bags. We used to have the the plan of what's gonna happen when the end of the world comes. Um, go to the kingdom hall. Have the number of the the brother that um you need to call in case of an emergency. Like I yeah. lived with that whole mentality of the end of the world so when they say stuff stuff like this i'm like no no i lived in fear so how are you gonna tell me that everything changed all of a sudden in 2013 no no but this this is a problem but why should people be worried about the anointed not being here when jehovah is still there and jesus and the scripture they've put there as a key scripture is talking about god never abandoning his people so why why does it matter whether stephen let garrett leosh mark sanderson is here or not if jehovah and and this is because Because they they have to direct us they have to show us the way just like moses brought his people to the promised land it was imp- you, that was important yeah i don't think you can equate these charlatans to moses <laughs> moses had clear um he had clear evidence of being backed by god moses could part the red sea moses could um right. you know he could t- right. turn his rod into a snake which of the governing body members could do can do any of that you can't equate moses was inspired god directly uh told moses what to write in the bible god gave moses the stone tablet so it's it's a completely different um arrangement whereas these are just these are just charlatans mm-hmm. who are pretending to be anointed when there is no evidence that they're even anointed so if anyone is worried about what's going to happen to them when when these charlatans disappear, the only thing that's going to happen is your life is going to get better because these <laughs> lunatics <laughs> are not going to be there to, to to make your life difficult or more complicated. That's, that's kind of my take now, on though, that. We know that now, though, like, mm-hmm. I, I understand that yeah. now that I'm not a witness anymore, but when I was yeah. a Jehovah's Witness, it was that serious. Like, we really did hold the anointed True. as as gold like whatever they said it came literally from god and that god spoke to them so that's why i feel like it's so Mm -hmm. it's it's unfair to to have all of that crumbled and and Mm -hmm. wake up that that's a lie and everything yeah it it is it's upsetting but at the same time if i was still a jehovah's witness and i saw this and the whole 2013 situation as well i'll be upset i would still be upset if i was a witness because that's that's not right they just pull their rug from underneath the feet of Jehovah's Witnesses every mm-hmm. day. That's what they do because they right, don't know what they're talking right. about. It's, it's the blind leading. Right. Yeah, anyway. And, and you know, there's more. Inf- <laughs> I just noticed this. And, and, and I'm only recently out of the organization. I was still in the organization and still an elder in January. And now they've introduced this thing, this box, <laughs> where you have to write your answers. So, so it's not enough that you have to underline your answers. And you see, I'm, I'm being a good Jehovah's Witnesses <laughs> audience. I've actually <laughs> underlined my answers. <laughs> yeah. But it's not enough now. It's not enough to underline your answers now. You actually have to write them in this box. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's, that's mm-hmm. the level of infantilization <laughs> that Jehovah's Witnesses mm-hmm. have to deal with. <laughs> Anyway, mm. paragraphs, in paragraph three, they say, some might wonder if the other sheep will stray from the truth when they no longer have the anointed brothers of the governing body to guide them. Now, again, uh, just to your point, Ruby, so I'm going to come to your side in a, in a, for just for a little bit. I think the argument was always <laughs> that when, they anoint, when the last anointed one dies, then then the new world is going to come because they were saying that mm-hmm. god is they were using the scripture in revelation of god is has told the four angels that are holding the winds of destruction in the four corners of the earth to hold back from releasing those winds until the last one of the anointed has been resurrected so that was always the argument that as soon as the last anointed one goes the great tribulation was right. going to start but now it's like kind of like they've changed it so even when the last of the governing body dies no, there will be no Armageddon. There will be no Great Tribulation. There will be no New World. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, so, so, so now they just they've just shifted the goalposts even further for Jehovah's Witnesses <laughs> to to an extent that even when all the governing body are not there, there they still be, will be no New World, and Jehovah's Witnesses will still be forced to believe in the religion because they're hedging their bets. 
<laughs> for that eventuality, which which may happen uh, if they don't continue appointing younger members to the governing body, which I think they will continue appointing anyway. So it's, it's kind of like a moot point um, because I think the governing body will always be here. They'll always be appointing newer governing body members into in 2100 in 2300 it will be the same song no so, no no no, yeah. no 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 i don't think they're gonna survive that long not that long but yeah but you see that that that's the thing because my mom used to always mm -hmm. tell me that it's only 144,000, and since 1914 mm -hmm. that already began we do already have majority of that are those spots already filled so we used to always look at the yearbooks and look at the numbers to to see if we were having growth mm -hmm. see that was an important thing mm -hmm. also as growing up as a jehovah's witness because yeah. we were only just waiting for all of the one hundred and forty-four thousand to be completely filled and then we're it's like we're waiting for that announcement like hey brothers and sisters mm -hmm. we finally reached the one hundred and forty-four thousand. now we can move on to the next phase and we don't have to go preaching door to door anymore so it, it, and, and the peace and security announcement too so we were always looking at politics we were always looking at the presidents mm -hmm. we were always looking at the the united nations and stuff like that like all of those little things we we were like really looking into that looking at all the numbers and just waiting for the for the, for the announcement and that's how my mom raised me all my life it's it's that fear mm -hmm. and it's always watching the publications seeing if a governing body member died or something mm -hmm. and it was like you're just waiting you're just mm -hmm. waiting for them to tell you that the end is yeah. finally here <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, <clears throat> the arrogance is there. And, and, and we're, we're going to come to your comments, audience. But what we do is we go through the progress when we, we, we're commenting on and then we come to the comments. Um, but the mm -hmm. arrogance, again, is they're saying the governing body to guide them. So where's Jehovah? Where is Jesus in the picture? It's like Jehovah and Jesus are totally relevant. The governing body has to guide. <laughs> um, the Jehovah's Witnesses, and this is where what we mean by them equating themselves literally to to God. In fact, even putting themselves above God. Um, I didn't have any comments on paragraph four, so if I skip any paragraph you wanted to comment on, Ruby, just let me know because the next one I was going to comment on was paragraph five. Um, yeah. So, so in mm -hmm. paragraph okay, five, they're saying they're say, they, so they've they've shown some scriptural accounts in, in paragraph four, which is very boring and tedious. Um, but in paragraph five, they say, do those two scriptural accounts indicate that something similar will happen to Christ's other sheep when the anointed are taken to heaven? And then they say, at that time, will faithful anointed, will faithful Christians on earth stray from their training as did Jehoash or drift into apostasy as many Christians during the first or during the second century CE rather? Now, this is very problematic for me because uh, let's just take one of these examples. They're taking the example of the second century CE and they're talking about the time when the, all the apostles died and the, the companions of the apostles, the Bible writers in the first century, all of them died. And they're saying after that, there was this great apostasy. People strayed from true worship. And then they're asking, will the same happen when all the anointed die? And their answer is absolutely not. And this is the thing I'll say, you, you can't equate the governing body to people like Moses. You can't equate the governing body to people like the apostles. The apostles could actually perform miracles. The apostles who actually saw Jesus in person and they were taught by Jesus directly. And even then, according to them, even then there was an apostasy when the apostles died, but they're saying we are higher than the apostles because, and when we die, there will be no such apostles. So what they say is they're superior to people who actually um, were taught directly by Jesus, which is just crazy. It's just crazy when you think about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, um, let's have a look at what else they've said in here. So. Uh, I don't think I had anything to say. So just stop me if there's a paragraph where you had something to say and I skip over it. Um, so in paragraph eight, in paragraph eight, they, sorry, did I skip over one that you wanted to comment on, Ruby? Um, I I hope that I hope the old I hope audience you can still hear me because I think I've lost Ruby there for a second. So I'm just gonna give my thoughts on paragraph eight. Um, so in paragraph eight, again, similar to the point I was making before, they say in the second century CE, the Christian congregation became corrupted 
apostate Christianity arose and became a prominent part of Babylon the Great, the world empire of false religion. Again, inspired prophecy was being fulfilled. So there's a lot to talk about here. So one of the things I would just say, I don't agree with the Jehovah's Witnesses interpretation that Babylon the Great um, <clears throat> What is a reference to the world empire of false religion. Actually, Bible scholars who study the book of Revelation say that when the book of Revelation talks about Babylon the Great, it's actually talking about the Roman Empire, but I'm not going to go into that. Um, and then they say apostate Christianity arose. I think the, ch the church fathers would disagree with that. And if you if you are in a Christian religion, like a kind of like an orthodox type of Christian religion that has a long history and a long tradition, they will disagree with the fact that apostate Christianity arose. Because even the Bible that we have today, it was composed by these same apostate Christians. The, 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 the Bible canon that we have with the 66 books from Genesis to Revelation, that was agreed by the so-called Apostle Christianity, the Bible that the Jehovah's Witnesses ad, uh, accept and use as, as, the, as the canonical um, bona fide Bible. So, yeah, so that, I think this is quite a controversial thing for them to say. Um, anyway, that's a bit boring. So I'm gonna move on from that um, and I'll go into paragraph nine. <clears throat> and um, Ruby and I were just talking about this before we, we came on air. In paragraph nine, they're, they're talking about the time we live in. So they're saying this is these are called the last days. And then they say uh, this era, era is called the times of the restoration of all things. And they say this period began in 1914. But is it true? Is it true? It, like putting aside the fact that 1914 is not a correct date, um, it's based on a wrong date of 607. So the Jehovah's Witnesses say that the Jerusalem was destroyed by the Babylonians in 607 BCE. No secular historian agrees with that. Secular historians say that uh, that event happened in 587, 586. And therefore the 1914 date is wrong because they base that date on this wrong date. They, they calculate that from six or seven as the date of the destruction of uh, Jerusalem. So <clears throat> that date is wrong. But that aside, they are saying that the times of the restoration of all things began in 1914, and they put that scripture in Acts 3 verse 21. And this is how they manipulate Jehovah's Witnesses, because they put a scripture and, and then they quote part of that scripture so that you just accept that this is what the scripture is saying. They make you think that that scripture is saying that the time of the restoration of things began in 1914, but is it what that scripture is saying? So I'm just going to bore you a little bit, audience, and I'm going to do a, a, a mini scripture duo, and I'm going to go into this um, script, into this scripture, and I'm going to read it in its context. <clears throat> and uh, maybe Ruby will also tell, her, tell us what she thinks, but this is what I think this scripture is saying. So verse 19 says, Repent therefore and turn around so as to get your sins blotted out so that seasons of refreshing may come from Jehovah himself. And he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus. Heaven must hold this one within itself until the times of the restoration of all things of which God spoke through the mouth of his all holy prophets of old. And then he talks about Moses saying, uh, Jehovah will raise up a prophet like Moses. Um, anyone who does not listen to that prophet will be destroyed. Uh, it says, uh, you are the sons of the prophets and so on. And then in verse 26, it says, God, after raising up his servant, sent, sent him to you first to bless you by turning each one of you away from your wicked deeds. So my understanding of this is it's talking about the time at which the apostles were preaching as the time of the restoration of all things, because it was saying that heaven must hold Jesus until that time comes. And then it's saying now Jesus has come and these are the seasons of refreshing and this is the time of the restoration of all things. That's what the scripture is saying. It's not talking about some future date in 1914. It's talking about the actual time when Peter and the other apostles are preaching to these people around Pentecost. That, that's my reading of it as an agnostic atheist. I don't know how you're reading it, um, Ruby, as a Christian. 
Yeah, this is this is what I'm confused about. And if anybody can let me know in the comments, or I'm also gonna ask you yourself, Chaka, because mm -hmm. when when I was growing up learning about 1914, that was the year that Jesus was on the throne, right? And oh, yeah. that was the beginning of doing, you know, doing God's will of going door to door, yeah. preaching, trying to find as many sheep as we can. I yeah used to view that as that was the beginning of the last days. I have never mm -hmm. heard the phrase, the restoration of all things. So I wanted to ask you mm -hmm. about that. Do you remember hearing that phrase in reference to Jesus becoming king in 1914? No, I think, I think they're just making stuff up as they go along. They're just finding any scripture that they can use to just confuse mm -hmm. Jehovah's Witnesses and back up these random comments that they're making and that's what they're doing because <clears throat> this scripture has nothing to do with the last days as, as we've just read it in its context it's talking about that right. actual event in the in the first century so yeah they, they just yeah they're just making stuff up um mm -hmm. <clears throat> anyway they so we need to let's have a look at what they say in paragraph 10 because i think uh, as you go deeper into the article it gets more and more controversial <laughs> um so um i just oh, wait, highlighted wait, wait, this wait, wait, i'm be, being wait, a very good student uh, hold on before you move on i, I, I forgot to, to ask you this question too. Nine. can you hear me mm -hmm. shall i go back to paragraph nine let's go back. <clears throat> yes oh I can. no i wanted to, to ask you about that nine? have you yeah i wanted to ask you about that when they use the word apostasy have you ever heard them use that word mm -hmm. so many times in one paragraph I, I it was like they said it like five times no no they're they're, they're really um they're really on a campaign against us quote unquote apostates um yeah, <clears throat> yeah so that, that's that an was, interesting that observation that was an interesting yeah. observation actually yeah five times in one paragraph so ooh, they're really going for it aren't they <clears throat> so basically i guess what they're yeah. trying to say that is that these apostates are not going to corrupt us they're not going to corrupt you even if we're not here right that's what david's right. plane wants us to think um <clears throat> anyway fighting talk <laughs> fighting talk <laughs> from the governing body um so paragraph 10 the last part they've said pure worship has been restored and it will never be corrupted again it is here to stay for all eternity. No weapon formed against us will succeed. And again, this is the presumptuousness. So if in Bible times, when there were prophets, when there were actual prophets who were speaking on behalf of God, who were listening directly to God and giving his message to people, um, there was still apostasy. They, they, the worship got corrupted. They're saying we're above the prophets of God. In the first century, when Jesus walked the earth, he, he taught, he selected his apostles, taught them, trained them, and, and all that. They, they're saying, well, the great apostasy arose in, in, in the second century. And they're saying, we are above that. We are superior to these people that were with Jesus, um, that were listening, that were able to perform miracles, that were uh, receiving revelations from God, being inspired. We are above that. We 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 are immune <laughs> to the apostasy that 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 took place in this in the first century or in the times of the Israelites. I just think this is crazy. Um, yeah, I think uh, Ruby, can you hear me? I think I've lost Ruby again. Okay, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move us along, and I think Ruby will will tell us when she's back on. So um, I'm gonna skip over these paragraphs because it's boring they go into these these scriptures with elijah and elisha um they've they've got this picture here I, I i usually like to comment on the pictures because uh usually when there's a picture they are really trying to hammer home some some really point important points that they they want you to understand but i don't think there's too much to say about this picture apart from that they're showing uh moses um selecting joshua or appointing joshua before he died and so that they the worship could continue and then elijah doing the same thing with elisha they will make a point of how they're doing the something similar as we go on uh, in this paragraph so i guess that's why they've 
kind of emphasize this. So they're comparing themselves to people like Moses. They're comparing themselves to people like Elisha, people who were receiving direct revelation from God and people who actually performed signs that proved that they were God's representatives. That's what the governing body is doing here. So anyway, let's see. We're going to see uh, in the next few paragraphs how they make that comparison. Um, so in paragraph 13, so this is what they say in paragraph 13. So this is where that comparison I was referring to comes in. I'm just trying to see if Ruby is back, not yet. So they say, with those examples in mind, what do you think will happen when the last of the anointed are taken to heaven? And then they say, we do not need to wonder, right? And then they say, they, they say the Bible reveals a simple, reassuring truth. Jehovah will never abandon his people on earth. So again, anyone who is saying I'm, I'm using clickbait, they are equating themselves to Jehovah. So they're saying when the last anointed are taken to heaven, and then they're using the scripture in Hebrews 13 verse 5, uh, B, which let's just go into that scripture. <clears throat> um, the, the B parts, it's God that's talking there. He says, I will never leave you and I will never abandon you. So they are saying, you know, us being taken away to heaven doesn't mean that we've left you or abandoned you. That's effectively what they're saying. Unless, I, I don't think I'm misreading that. That's effectively what they're saying. When we go to heaven, it doesn't mean that we've left you or abandoned you. Or abandoned you. But that scripture is not talking about the anointed. It's talking about Jehovah never leaving his, his people, never abandoning them. Um, and then they go on to say, like Moses and Elijah, the small group of anointed Christians who take the lead to date understand the importance of training others. Uh, for decades, the, the brothers of the governing body have been training men from among the other sheep to take the lead. And I'm just going to scroll down a bit so I can see what it says, what the rest of the paragraph says. Um, it says, for example, they have organized many schools to train elders, traveling overseers, branch committee members, overseers at Bethel and others. The governing body has personally been training uh, helpers to the various committees of the governing body. These helpers are right now faithfully carrying a heavy load of responsibility. They are well prepared to continue the work of caring for Christ's sheep. So, so yeah, they're clearly saying we're, we're like Moses and Elijah. We will never leave you and will never abandon you in the sense that we mm -hmm. are training people who are going to look after you <laughs> when we're you not see, here. So, I told you. I told you. Just, they're just like Moses. It's just, it's, it's just the arrogance. It's just the arrogance mm -hmm. of saying it's, it's not like I, I would accept if they said don't worry even if we're not here jehovah has it under control we don't know what jehovah right. is gonna do when we're not mm -hmm. here but we're just servants of jehovah like all of you so don't worry about us jehovah will look after you but no no we we have it under control we're training people such that even if we're not here uh it will be looked after it's kind of like it's like a family business right even if mm -hmm. i die this is my will this is my last yeah. will and testament for when I die, the business will be looked after by my son who I'm training or my protege right. that I'm training. <laughs> it's, it's just, now I it understand the overlapping the generation. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Now I understand why they did the whole overlapping generation because they're going to overlap their governing body generation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now the understanding is that they're going to be training people now not mm -hmm. later so mm -hmm. they're not gonna walk us through paradise like we they used to give us this whole fantasy world that yeah. they were gonna walk us through paradise that's why the governing body it, now it makes sense because they put two new people on they took mm -hmm. anthony out of here and now mm -hmm. they're gonna bring the new guys the the younger mm -hmm. guys and it's gonna be a whole generational shift and i don't like it it's fishy it's suspicious i don't trust these guys i don't know these guys and no for me i can't them. ever see myself being a jehovah's witness again because the governing body that i grew up with they were supposed to die and we were mm -hmm. they were supposed to walk us in through paradise and i'm not supposed to be 27 years old married with three kids and graduated high school so no i i, I will never i will never accept that and i will never accept the new governing the new governing body members i will never accept the helpers and the broadcast i will never accept none of that and yeah. th this is why this is this is exactly why and and this this paragraph this whole paragraph i don't think there's a script 
scripture. Let, let me just try and scroll up a bit. Is there a script? Okay, they, they've put Hebrews 13 verse 5, but again, they're, uh, they're, they're totally misapplying that scripture because the scripture is talking about Jehovah, but they're saying it's, we will never abandon you. We as the governing body will never abandon you because mm -hmm. we're going to train other people. But mm -hmm. there is no other scripture right. to back up any of what they're saying, any of these crazy ideas. Um, and the, the, the whole, all these arrangements that they're talking about in the scripture, none of these arrangements are scriptural. They, there is no governing mm -hmm. body in the scriptures. It's not just that the words governing body are not in the Bible. There is no idea of a governing body in the in the Bible. Uh, in the first century, there was no governing body. When when the Apostle Paul wrote his letters, he didn't consult with anyone. He didn't go to a governing. There was no writing committee. The Apostle Paul just wrote mm -hmm. these letters. Uh, mm -hmm. He just went and formed mm -hmm. congregations when he wanted to. He went and appointed. Uh, Timothy or mm -hmm. Titus to do things that he wanted them to do. He, he, there was no governing body. James wrote his letters. The guy who wrote Revelation, they just wrote these things without consulting with any governing body. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, mm -hmm. where does it say about traveling overseas in the Bible? That's number two. <laughs> where does it say about branch committee members in the Bible? Where does it say about yeah. overseers at Bethel? Even the whole Bethel arrangement. Where does it say about Bethel in the Bible? <laughs> and then, mm -hmm. and then it says help us to various committees of the governing body. Even if you were to accept that there was a governing body in the first century, where does it say in the Bible that the governing body in the first century had a teaching committee? It had a writing committee. It had a publishing committee. It had a personnel mm -hmm. committee. Uh, it had a coordinators committee. <laughs> where, where is mm -hmm. that? Where is all that coming from? Um, so, so it's right. just oh, just man, and you've got this whole paragraph that Jehovah's Witnesses will be reading at their meetings. They'll be forced to read that. They'll be forced to regurgitate this stuff um, that, that they've read, that just read, and yet none of it is scriptural. They they don't even try to superimpose scriptures because there is no scriptural backing to any of this stuff that they are describing here. So just yeah, pure madness. Um, yeah. Let's look at this. Let's look at the. Let's look at the picture. <laughs> uh, I have quite a bit to say about the picture, but I'll let you take the picture first, uh, Ruby. Um, I just, I, I just, I see it for what it is now. I, I see. I could totally see now that I'm out. It just feels like a corporation. It feels like a board meeting. It feels like they are going to be. Um, training these people on what to say how to handle certain situations like like hr so they're they're gonna be mm -hmm. you know graduated from this and go to all these congregations and enforce the laws that the governing yeah. body wants to have on and yeah exactly yeah yeah they, they, they will be the, they, their people on the ground um i think i've lost ruby again so i'm just gonna make my comments and then we'll see if she comes back on so you, you've got Stephen let there on the um on the left hand side as a governing body member so what they're demonstrating there is that the governing body are involved in these various schools because what happens is when people go to the gilead school which is the the elite school in the governing in the jehovah's witness arrangement is that they they get lectures from governing body members uh like they're like long lectures an hour and a half at least and I think each governing body member gives at least one lecture and then the helpers give lectures as well. Uh, so when when I went, me and my wife went to SKE, they kind of try and replicate that at SKE such that every Friday, every Friday afternoon, you would have a lecture by either a member of the governing body or a helper to the governing body. They would give these lectures. And some of the things they said in these lectures were completely outrageous. So Stephen Lett gave a lecture uh, it was like a one hour, 30 minute uh, rant. And he it was called um, putting the pure language on an elevated plane or something like that. And basically he has this beef with younger people calling, using the word guys. Um, so apparently Stephen, uh, Gerrit Losh, so the, I, I heard a backstory. Gerrit Losh, one, uh, so uh, uh, one guy who was my circuit overseer, he was at the United States Bethel, and one time he went and he went to pick Gerrit Losh up from the airport. Gerrit Losh and his wife, because uh, they have these driver duties at Bethel, so he went to pick Gerrit Losh up and, and from the airport. And and so as he was driving them back to Bethel from the airport, he said he said, "Oh, so did you guys have a good time?" 
And Gary Lush did not like the fact that uh, this young brother was calling him and his wife guys. So he then said, call me on Monday morning. Um, call me, call me at my office on Monday morning. So this brother is like, oh, maybe he's just, he just wants to give me a promotion because I've picked up a governing body member and his wife from the airport and so on. And, um, and so he calls Gerrit Lush in his office and Gerrit Lush says, um, does my wife look like a woman? And the guy is just like completely confused and is like, um, no, well, it seems to me like you, you think my wife looks like a woman, like a guy. Uh, he, no, he said, does, does my wife look like a guy? Does my wife look like a guy? And he says, no. Uh, so no, it seems to me you think my wife looks like a guy, like a man. He was like, no, that, I, I, I never thought that. But you said, you called us guys. So Gary Lush is like, you called us guys. And then the guy, he, the penny drops in his, his head and he goes, oh, right. So he didn't like me saying, did you guys have a good time? And so he gives him this long lecture of, you can't be calling my wife guy, a guy, you know, she's not a guy, she's a woman. And, and, and the, yeah, and basically this long lecture. And then like literally the next day, Stephen Lett does this morning worship where he goes on this rant about uh, <laughs> calling all the, all the Bethelites guys. And then the lecture we watched at SKE, Stephen Lett made it all about that. He's like, we don't call all the people guys. And he was like, we should call all the people brother this. And he says, even when I was on, a gov even when I was on the governing body, when brother Baba, so he was talking about Kari Baba. He was like, when brother Baba was on the governing body, um, I never said Carrie. I would always say Brother Baba. I would always say Brother Jeras. I would never call them by their first name. So I don't know why this, you younger people are doing that. So that, that, that's, <laughs> that's one of the lectures we had at SKE. So um, yeah, so that's what Stephen that basically is doing there with the Gilead class. Um, then they've got um, us over here. I just recognize some faces. So this guy, this Asian looking guy, he's a member of the British Britain branch committee. His name is Rob Lee. I mean, I, I don't have much to say about him. He seems like a nice guy. Um, and then they've got, um, this guy is a Gilead instructor. So his name is James Cawthon. Now, what I will say about James Cawthon is he seems to be kind of one of the more um, genuine people in the organization. Because when he gives talks, his talks are quite loving, they're quite down to earth and they're quite genuine. And I'm actually quite surprised that they've sidelined him. They don't use him much at the Gilead graduations. They tend to use Mark Numer and the newer guys who just have very crazy ideas. Um, so I, I don't understand that arrangement, but anyway, that's <laughs> that's a bit of a sidestep, but I just wanted to give you um, an idea of some of the people that you see on on, this, on these pictures. Um, so let's move on. I think we've lost Ruby again, but let's just move on. And um, and Ruby's gonna join us when, when she's back. <laughs> um, so, in paragraph 14, so they, they just have to infantilize the, <laughs> the members of the religion again. So they say, um, here is the key point of our discussion. It's not like they haven't already made it apparent by saying this is going to be the focus of the discussion. They have to tell people what the key point is. And they say, uh, when they last of the anointed are taken to heaven near the end of the great tribulation, Pure worship will keep right on going here on earth. Yes, because we've wrote, written our last will and testament, testament, and we've appointed these helpers, so you don't have to worry. We'll never abandon you, basically, is the message there. Um, sorry, Ruby, we lost you for a bit. So if, if you want to fill in any of the things that yeah, we've I am so talking about, sorry, please though. go ahead. Yeah, I am so sorry. We had a storm here in Florida, and I it was a tornado warning, so my internet is all over the place so sorry mm -hmm. it's okay these things happen now this is where it starts to get even more controversial if you thought it wasn't contro it was controversial enough as it was this is where I, i've literally highlighted the whole paragraph because it's just crazy um so <laughs> anyway they say still some might wonder I, who are these some who are wondering I, I, who are these people okay That's what said I'm she's saying. one of those people <laughs> Ruby has confessed. She's one of those people that are wondering. But anyway, so they say, what about the anointed? What will they mm -hmm. do after they depart from the earthly scene? 
Um, then they say the Bible answers that question directly. It reveals that the political elements of this world will battle with the lamb. They will lose, of course. We read, the lamb will conquer them. Now look at this, and who will help them? <laughs> Who will help him? Who will help Jesus? Jesus, apparently Jesus needs help. <laughs> and what I'm going to do, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into, um, I'm going to go into this scripture they've used here. They've, got, they've used um, Revelation 17 verse 14. And uh, I'm just going to read to see whether it talks about Jesus needing help from anyone. So it says, these will battle with the lamb, but because he is the Lord of lords and king of kings, the lamb will conquer them. Also, those with him who are called and chosen and faithful will do so. Um, doesn't, I don't know if you see anything, Ruby, there about Jesus needing help from anyone. <laughs> I think... I think yeah exactly so now now it is it, it sounds stupid now it really does sound stupid now so <laughs> apparently jesus it, it clearly says jesus will conquer them it doesn't say anything about him needing help but apparently they think he needs their help <laughs> stephen lett yep. david splain uh gary Lush, jeffrey jackson uh, they think jesus needs their help <laughs> um anyway so mm -hmm. it, it says who are these the resurrected anointed ones, so again, the governing body. Mm -hmm. So when the last of the anointed on earth are taken to heaven near the end of the great tribulation, one of the first assignments will be to fight. What a remarkable mm -hmm. assignment. And it's all about assignments <laughs> in the organization, isn't it? It's all about assignments. Oh, what an assignment. Yeah. You've got a convention talk. What an assignment. Mm -hmm. Oh, privilege. you're on the, on the building, on the kingdom who build. What an assignment. It's all about these privileges and assignments. Um, yeah. Uh, this is crazy. It gets more crazy, by the way. Um, so it says, <clears throat> now this is interesting. I found this interesting. It says, some anointed Christians were fighters before they became Jehovah's Witnesses. Do you know who they're talking about, Ruby? Do you know who they mean when they say this? Oh, I think we've lost Ruby again. Uh, anyway, so I'm just going to give it away. So if you've read um, Samuel Head's life story, he talks about him serving in the military. At, I don't remember the details, but he served for a bit in the military. And then the other one who was very famous for having served in the military, and I, I think when this material was put together, because this material is based on a talk that Samuel Head gave at the 2021 annual meeting and it's literally word for word the talk that he gave at that annual meeting and uh, but at the time Anthony Morris III was still a member of the governing body and Anthony Morris was never ashamed to talk about his experiences as a medic uh, during the Vietnam War he went and served in Vietnam for a bit so those are the two people they're referring to when they say that Sam served in the armed forces of this world they're talking about two specific governing body members uh, Samuel Heard and Anthony Morris III, who is no longer a member of the governing body. So uh, yeah, I, thought that, I, I thought that's interesting that they actually just had to mention that, that we actually have governing body members who've served in the armed forces. That's crazy. Um, anyway, so let's uh, see what they say further in this paragraph. Um, they, they say they put aside all physical warfare However, after being raised to heaven, they will serve along with Christ and his holy angels, waging the final war against God's enemies. So they're really like elevating themselves, like really putting themselves up there. Um, and none of this is scriptural, by the way. I don't want to go into those two scriptures, but those two scriptures that yeah. cited them, nothing to do with what they're describing here. Absolutely nothing. Actually, Galatians 5 verse 2, 22 is an easy one. That one talks about the footage of the spirit. <laughs> he said there's nothing mm -hmm. to do with what they're saying about some governing body members having served in the army and then therefore they have the experience. They have the experience to help Jesus because they served in the army because uh, um, uh, Samuel Heard was a driver. Because they've learned peace. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, what they're saying is they served in the military. Some anointed served in the military. So Samuel uh -huh. Heard is one of those and he was a driver for the military for like three months or something so apparently he's got the experience to go and help jesus <laughs> wage his final war <laughs> against uh his enemies yeah and um 
is Shaq Compose in the comments says, I can hear, I'm just going to put that comment up because I think it's relevant. He says, I can hear Samuel Head growling right now. Yeah, he actually growled when he was giving this talk uh, at the 20, 2021 annual meeting. Um, Ruby, just stop me if you if you need to. Um, because um, we're almost coming to I was going to so, ask you, do you... I was going to ask you, do you think that they're referring yeah, right. to Anthony Morris, that he used to work in the military or something, and he was a governing yeah, body yeah, member? Yeah, they're, they're, okay. they're referring to, to to Anthony Morris III and Samuel Head, because those are the two okay. that have gone on record and spoken about serving in the military. So it's just the arrogance, yeah, okay. you know, it's just because we served in the military and therefore we, need, we can help Jesus, right? Um, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so... 16, this is the last one I have comments on. I think it's, one okay. of, it's probably the last or the penultimate one. It says, think of it. On earth, some anointed Christians are elderly, even frail. Um, mm -hmm. Again, Gary Klosh, reference to Gary Klosh, <laughs> and <laughs> who, are, who are living on borrowed time. Gary Klosh and Samuel Head. Uh, but once resurrected mm. to life in heaven, they will be mighty and immortal spirit creatures assigned to fight alongside their warrior king, Jesus Christ. And when when Samuel Heard gave this talk at the annual meeting, the 2021 annual meeting, he got so excited that he mispronounced the word immortal. So he said, instead of saying mighty immortal spirit creatures, he said mighty immoral spirit creatures and such that they had to edit the word immortal out of the talk that they put on JW Broadcasting. That's how excited, how, that's how he was salivating about this prospect of helping Jesus <clears throat> during the Battle of Armageddon. Anyway, it says, um, after the war of Armageddon has been fought, they will share in guiding mankind to perfection again. <laughs> They have to guide mankind to perfection. Jehovah can do it on his own. Apparently, <laughs> Jesus can do it on his own. But he needs the help of Samuel Heard, Garrett Leosh, Stephen Lett, David Splain, uh, Jeffrey Jackson, Gage Flegel, Jeffrey Winder. He needs their help to, to guide <laughs> the humans to perfection. Um, yeah, anyway, I should not stop making it a laughing matter because I'm sure some people take these things seriously. Anyway, they say, without a doubt, they will then do their beloved brothers and sisters on earth a lot more good in heaven than they could ever do as mere imperfect humans. So apparently Jehovah can't do humans any good. Like apparently Jehovah just lets people die of cancer. Jehovah just lets war happen. Jehovah just lets children die of po poverty. And I mean, of, of starvation, malnutrition and other things. He needs to wait until Stephen Lett and Cole go to heaven and then they'll, they're gonna fix everything. So anyone who is saying this is click clickbait, my title is clickbait. This is why I've called this episode governing body equate themselves to god in fact they're not even equating themselves they are elevating themselves higher than god uh, in terms of their arrogance that they are portraying in this article so yeah <clears throat> ruby <laughs> your thoughts before we go to the comments <clears throat> um nope i completely agree with you on everything um the only thing that i had to comment on was a scripture i think where does wh which paragraph does it have Isaiah twenty six? Uh, when it's talking that talks about, about the inner rooms, I think it talks about going into the inner yes. rooms. Yes, is it the last paragraph? I think it's it's the, probably the last paragraph. That's it. Yeah, the last paragraph. <laughs> okay, That's so it. that right there, I wanted uh, to I'm ask you. Put if Isaiah twenty six you... verse twenty. Yeah. Okay, that right there, I wanted to ask you: Do you take that? Do you take? Would you take that scripture in this context from JWs? Do you take it literally or symbolically? I just wanted to ask everybody. Oh, good question. For me, I think for me it depends on the context. Really, I would say when it was written, it was probably because probably it's mixed. because it's telling you that when the climatic war of Armageddon begins, what are we gonna do? The Bible says. And then it and then it quotes Isaiah 26. So as a Jehovah's Witness, if anybody can um, think about when you used to be a witness in the comments, let me know. Would you take this scripture literally or would you take it symbolically? Because to me, I would take that as 
literally because when the armageddon comes and you know they're going to be knocking on people's doors and and the governments are going to turn against us that's the fear mongering and that's yeah, when yeah. jehovah's witnesses are are being told that oh we're going to have to hide in a basement or something yeah, we're going to have yeah. to lock our doors we're going to have to congregate yeah. and not let any, anybody know our location and, yeah. and if if we have to lie for jehovah we would lie for jehovah so that's the yeah, theocratic absolutely. warfare and and even mm -hmm. doing something that's bad say mm -hmm. lying lying comes from satan but mm -hmm. you see that's why i wanted to ask you do you take it literally or would you take it symbolically <clears throat> do you mean as a jehovah's witness or just as yeah reading who's... reading that paragraph yeah how how that, would you take that, it that's the I, I i'm 100 on board with what what you're saying that's the fear mongering that's the the whole basement you know their basement videos that they made i think it was the 2017 convention yep they, uh, they yep. so so jehovah's witnesses will be reading this on sunday saturday and sunday at the meeting then they'll be super excited and saying oh the governing body are about to go to heaven and now we need to right. find basements now we need to prepare our go bags because they 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 don't realize that go bags are only meant to last you for three days they're meant for natural disasters like an earthquake a tornado or right. something like that they, they take it literally that that's exactly. what's gonna that's gonna be people actually call them the armageddon the armageddon bags <laughs> it's like go bags have right so that's why <laughs> Yeah, so that's why really quickly, I wanted to ask the context of that scripture through AI. So on the internet, I asked the AI, how would they take that scripture, right? So really quickly, I'll just read what it says. It says, the prophet mm -hmm. Isaiah is urging people to seek refuge and safety. The imagery is akin to seeking shelter during a storm, closing doors, etc. The indignation refers to God's judgment or wrath against sin. It encourages patience, patience and trust, knowing that God's deliverance will come. So if, if I scroll down. Uh, <clears throat> I, think, I think we've lost Ruby again. So we'll, we'll wait until she comes back so that she um, gives us that final call because that's really really interesting but we just i know we've gone over an hour so we're just gonna go into the comments i'm gonna stop sharing my screen but i i, I can bring it back if something okay comes am up i back relevant. oh yeah you're back yeah so i'll just bring that up again. okay so i put it um, in the chat just in case okay mm -hmm. so the application Good. of that of the context of that scripture was in times of trouble we can find solace by seeking god's presence in prayer and meditation just as people seek mm -hmm. shelter during a yeah sorry we, we've lost ruby again <laughs> so so we'll come back to to that um so i'm just go to the comments i'm not gonna wrap you into the comments but anyway yeah i'm, I'm gonna wrap you in very quickly uh, yesterday you found yourself in prison now you see there's a change in season if you doubted you were told not to dare until you looked and found the people who care so you turned and went for the destination this is the place where you can ask your questions <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry finish your uh, finish your quote ruby <clears throat> okay i put it in the chat just in case mm -hmm. so you guys can understand what what i'm trying to get at because i mm -hmm. keep getting kicked out lord have mercy yeah. So, so basically it's talking it's basically it's symbolic but they've they've superimposed it right. on this armageddon situation so that they can justify their fear mongering which is yeah part and parcel of the religion yes so, exactly mm, the and we're supposed to mm -hmm. wait on jehovah mm -hmm, absolutely yeah, well i thought waiting on jehovah okay, means just trusting that he's he rescues you why do you have to create a bunker <laughs> if you're meant to wait on jehovah mm -hmm. so which is it yeah yeah um exactly. so I think these were acknowledgements at the beginning that they could hear us. So Miss Maria Rodriguez um, gave us a high five. Uh, Movie Man 96 uh, gave us a thumbs up. <clears throat> Rachel uh, said, hi, everybody. Hi, Rachel. And Ruby, you also said hello. So that sounds good. <laughs> um, Movie Man 96 <laughs> says, well, can you blame them? Most of the partakers are mentally ill in their eyes. Ridiculous that they just say we're right and everybody else is crazy. So this was a reference to what I was saying, that the, the, the governing body does not acknowledge any other anointed ones, anyone who partakes of the emblems. They, they've, they've said it in the publications that they don't recognize them as genuine anointed Christians, and the only ones they recognize are their fellow governing body members. <clears throat> 
Um, okay, so then Lawrence says, um, the gaslighting is crazy. They're always switching up doctrine and calling us crazy for mentioning it. Yes, that's what they do. And uh, I did a rebuttal to the one of the Gilead talks where he just says, shovel the coal. Like, you know, basically don't ask any questions when we change anything, just shovel the coal. <laughs> um, Mm -hmm. Jackie Jack says, good afternoon, everyone. Happy allergy season. Yeah, it's pollen season, actually. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> and Jackie Jack says, the GB tries to implant, so GB's governing body tries to implant thoughts in your head. And that's what they say. We used to think. Who are the we? <laughs> Just say we used to tell <laughs> you, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> oops, what have I done? Uh, what did I do? Uh, that was you. You agreed with um, with Lauren. And then Jackie Jack says, programming, programming indeed. This is why they make Jehovah's Witnesses read it at home. So they make you read it at home. And it's not enough for you to just read it at home. You have to underline it at home. And we just learned now that they're not only just requiring people to underline it, they've put boxes in the watchtower such that you need to write your answers in your box, in the boxes. And, and the elders will be spying on your uh, device or in whatever you're using for the watchtower to see if you've actually written out your answers in the boxes. And if you have them, then you'll be seen as not being spiritual enough. So you, you read it at home, underline your answers, write out your answers in your own words in the boxes. And then on top of that, you get it read to you again during the meeting, and then you have to comment on it and, and <laughs> regurgitate what has just been read to you. It's, it's, I, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any other religion that tries to program its members like this lot um to cool mm -hmm. w mm says hello from arkansas the wi-fi isn't connecting correctly today i'll be listening as i can me so thanks too for joining <laughs> uh, <laughs> me Ms. too Maria there's a Rodriguez. storm going on over here in america and it's it's crazy lots of people are struggling yeah miss maria rodriguez says i have to agree on the fact that nowadays the credit is given to the governing body and then to jehovah this is definitely not what i learned since i was literally disappointing to say the least and now it's not they're actually pushing jehovah completely out of the picture so jesus has to wait for the experienced samuel Heard to go and help him in the warfare jehovah has to wait until they they go and try and fix the problems that mankind is facing um Toku says, uh, such arrogance on the part of the governing body, I agree. Um, Miss Maria Rodriguez says, arrogance, prepotent, and actually very sad to try to equate themselves to God. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. um, Shaq Composer says, they will be long gone in 100 years. I think religions are very stubborn, so <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I will see. Um, Movie Man 96 says, being awake, awake now these changes are aggravating i was around jw family and friends for the beard broadcast and the pants and no ties and suit jackets they were so happy that they finally had permission yeah why do you as a grown man need to have permission mm -hmm. to wear a beard why does a grown woman need permission to wear pants um it's crazy mm -hmm. Uh, Movie Man 96 says the governing body has literally taken away people's free will and they're grateful. So sad to see this happen to good hearted people. And the thing is, they're taking more and more control. So in the past, we used to believe that um, uh, when I was Jehovah's Witness, that in paradise, you could just live wherever you wanted. You could build whatever house you wanted. And then David Splain came on one convention and he said, it's not going to be like that. You have to live where we tell you to live. You can't just live by the beach, just because you want to live by the beach in the new world. So they've been controlling the new world now. It's not enough to control Jehovah's Witnesses in this old world. They have to control the new world as well. Uh, it just never ends. <clears throat> um, a, uh, Pies says, glad you read the early church fathers. And this was a, this is a reference to a comment I made earlier where they say that uh, there was apostasy in the second century. And I just argued that the church fathers would strongly disagree with that. The church fathers actually created the Bible that Jehovah's Witnesses use. And yet they claim there was this great apostasy in the second century. Miss um, <clears throat> Maria Rodriguez says, for someone who grew up in the truth, if once I believed that there was some truth in this organization, what is presented today is absolutely alien to me, dates, new lights. I think a lot of people will agree to with that. People, they're just changing it day, uh, by the day, by the minute, actually. Uh, Movie Man 96 says, it's funny that they literally take spiritual truths, the Bible, even the name Jehovah from apostates and Babylon the Great. Doesn't make sense. Exactly. He was a Catholic priest 
that coined that uh, it's it's actually miss translation because it's YHWH and this guy he just anglicized it to Jehovah and they picked that up and yet they call them Babylon the Great. Um, Rachel says they love to turn the scriptures into any context they want, not reading the scriptures for what the scriptures are. Couldn't agree more. Um, Papayas says, crazy, I don't know how they discredit the worship of early Christians after the apostles. Exactly. The, the, these are people that had at least some close connection to people who actually walked with Jesus. Um, and then movie by 96 says they're getting and more, more and more scared of apostates. It's like they have valuable mm -hmm. information or something that the governing body doesn't want JWs to know for some reason. That's true. And that, and well spotted Ruby that one paragraph had five <laughs> five references to apostates. It was a few. It was a few. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why they keep saying apostasy? Mm -hmm. Like I've never heard that word so much used after yeah. you know Christianity yeah. and stuff like that. Well, yeah. you know, the governing body equates themselves to the apostles too. They, they believe did. that they are the only ones who can partake because the apostles, the disciples were anointed and they're anointed. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. consider themselves almost like the 12 or, or the 11 no, no. that they, had they the last put, supper with Jesus. They put themselves higher because they say we're going to do what the apostles failed mm -hmm. to do. The apostles failed to prevent the corruption of the of the congregation. We right. are going to make sure that that doesn't happen. So they, we're actually greater than the, the apostles. <laughs> <laughs> We're greater That's than crazy. God, basically. Sorry, I think <laughs> I didn't read this so, uh, one. They watched our anti-immune to opposite goings on. This article is proving that very true. Um, mm -hmm. Movie 196 says, they, they say it's presumptuous to say that they're led by Holy Spirit and they're imperfect and can make mistakes. But at the same time, you have to listen to everything they say, no matter what. Um, Teresa Miller says, training now by the governing body to keep watch over the flock after the rupture. Yes, they, they've said in the watchtower now, they've said in the past, we never used to believe in the rupture, but now we believe that the rupture will happen in reference to the governing body. So everything is everything is good for the governing mm -hmm. body. If you, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what schools, Rachel says, the schools don't teach anything that the rank and fire don't already do or say. I've, I've, I've actually made a video on my channel where I make this point in that you're basically regurgitating previous watchtowers at these schools. There is nothing spectacular. There's nothing new you learn at these schools. Yep. Um, Somebody said that in the comments too. Mm -hmm, yep. Yeah. Uh, Teresa Miller says, all a man made arrangement um very true mm -hmm. and cr said jw's famous paganism fiery lake forever repent <laughs> and i don't fully understand um but yeah you're probably right cr um okay that's you ruby so we'll just keep over your comment mm -hmm. we're not interested in your comment um great western says i think the beginning of end times 1914 will be abolished and new light will evolve as the older generation of jw die of 1914 will be forgotten like it was never a thing and and they will say some people thought 1914 you'll see when they change it they will say some thought some run ahead and thought 1914 <laughs> <laughs> they'll blame they'll blame the jehovah's witnesses uh teresa is laughing at something oh my god Said, probably something you said, uh, Ruby. Uh, Movie Man 96 says, it seems that they think Jehovah's Witnesses are worried about having to make their own decisions based on Bible trained consciences. Yes. They, yes, it's not, they could just say, you have the Bible, you have the publications, we've been training you all these years to use your Bible trained consciences, so, so don't worry about us going. Why do they have to say, no, we'll train the helpers so that when we're not oh, here. Oh, because the new scrolls are going to open. Because the they always used to right. tell us that the, when when we get to paradise and the new scrolls are open, then they are the ones who are going to interpret that for us. So who's going to be the one telling us what the new scrolls say? Yeah. <laughs> well, who knows? That's an odd picture of Let. That's uh, the picture in the article, Stephen Let. Mm -hmm. uh, Rachel says, that's why I never went through their schools. It's a waste of energy and time and the rank and file are learning the same, <laughs> whatever they're learning at regular meetings. Um, and mm -hmm. then... Um, Movie Man 96 says, I've learned a new phrase recently, loaded language. This organization uses so much of it. And if you're not part of it, you have no idea what they're talking about. Also not Bible-based. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, Teresa Miller was wondering about something. And then um, Shaq Composer said, I can hear Samuel Heard growling right now. That was in reference to Samuel Heard leaving <laughs> the army and salivating over the prospect of killing the apostles during um, Armageddon, helping Jesus. Jesus needs mm -hmm. his help. 
Um, Movie Man 96 says, how does Stephen being married to a woman, not a man, or being respected as an older person have anything to do with Bible, anything spiritual? So thanks for this stuff. But yeah, he, he went on this rant about how you shouldn't use guys, how you shouldn't, you should call it, or every other person brother, not by their first name. So. Are we supposed to not get easily offended? We're not supposed to get easily <laughs> offended by our brothers and sisters. So why is he getting so offended of, of something that doesn't even matter? Imagine, imagine, yeah. And then uh, Movie Man says, these guys are just men for sure. I love it. <laughs> um, and then Rachel says, all these articles are copy, paste, and updating from other publications. Yep. Yes, this article, this particular article is goes. literally word for word the talk that Samuel Head gave at the 2021 annual meeting. Teresa Miller says, so the ex military are going to assist Jesus by using the, ex the, the expertise in combat. <laughs> <laughs> let's see we'll see we'll take a few more and then we'll probably wrap things up um miss maria rodriguez says so much spiritual banquet in the last days so jw copy paste um uh, they mm -hmm. had a whole convention about it so i would take it literally that's an answer to your question ruby um as a team i didn't mm. don't take that specific scripture either figuratively or literally and then that's you ruby and then um shark composer mm -hmm. says Wait on Jehovah or the next annual meeting. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and uh, Teresa said, same difference. And um, Teresa Miller says, new light has turned into the governing body says. Very true. Nowadays, they're not even, yep. they don't even try to pretend to be basing it on any scripture. They just say, yeah, this is what we've decided. Take it or leave it. In fact, take it. If you don't take it, we'll, name, we'll label you as an apostle. Right and your family are going to shun you. Right. And you, you're not even allowed the privilege mm -hmm. of a simple greeting if you turn up at the meetings. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, I'm glad we did this article together, Ruby. This, this was like a bomb, isn't it? There's just so yeah. much madness. And I hope uh, any yeah. Jehovah's Witnesses that are going to the meetings this weekend, I hope this helps you. I even underlined the answers, you see? So, you know, I was, I was a good... <laughs> so it helps at least they gave us the boxes i'm happy about that I'm though because before we used to write on the corners so i'm happy they gave us some space because yeah we yeah, needed the space us, we need the boxes we need the boxes which we're, ch we're, we're children we're literally yeah <laughs> worse than kindergartners um uh, i think i've lost ruby so um ruby any any final words before we wrap yeah. things up for today <laughs> Man, nope, that's it. I'm I'm good. I, I'm glad that I did this with you. I got all of my thoughts out there. I feel like they just have Christianity so twisted up that it's it's blasphemous and, and, mm -hmm. and I'm learning how and I'm inquiring how to be a real Christian now. So I'm still learning all of these things myself and, and how to interpret these things. But I do feel like it is such a travesty that the Jehovah's Witnesses are doing this because it's so hard to move past this crap mm -hmm. and learn about what the Bible really teaches, you know? And sure. they Sure. You know, it, it's it's sad, but like I'm glad I'm finally out and I'm just I'm doing this with you and, and realizing that I left I left something yeah. really fake. Like I'm glad that I'm finally out of this because this is false. It's false, it's wrong, and they just make like you said, they just make stuff up as they go. So mm -hmm. thank you so I, much. And it, it reinforces it to, to you. Every, every time I see anything JW it just reinforces right. to me how right I was in leaving the religion. Yeah. So are we back right, next week, exactly. Ruby? Yeah. And we're back next yep. week. So Ruby and I are going to be back next week. I haven't had a look at what the article is, but I'm sure it's more craziness. So I'm going to put the banner up um, as soon as <laughs> I've <laughs> kind of thought of a title that encapsulates what they're talking about. Um, so audience, uh, mm -hmm. please don't... Mm -hmm. Please don't forget to like this video, to subscribe to the channel. You can also subscribe to Ruby's channel. Mm -hmm. Ruby's channel is at New York mm -hmm. Carican, and there's lots of fun stuff happening mm -hmm. on that channel. I'm tuning in all the time. Um, join us next week again for another episode of the Alternative Watchtower study. Uh, for now, Ruby and mm -hmm. I are going to vanish like smoke. Thank you for joining us. Hey. as Jehovah's enemies. They're gonna vanish like smoke. But you can't do that.
said one of the critics. That doesn't bother me. Really? Again? Really? Look at that little enemy of God. Somehow we dilly and dally takes us years and we wonder why. What are you waiting for? 